Ron Hextall continues his offseason with another long-term contract extension, this time re-signing Ricard Raquel to a six-year deal worth $5 million per season. That's Ron Hextall's fifth UFA he's re-signed, starting with Jeff Carter mid-season, Brian Russ shortly after the playoff run, Casey DeSmith about a week ago, Chris Letang a few days ago, and now Ricard Raquel. And this is the third one at a six-year deal. Russ, Letang, and now Raquel all getting six-year extensions. And it's almost like Ron Hextall is setting up kind of the next wave here of the core. You know, Sidney Crosby mentioned after the season, he does want to play another three more years after his contract expires. And Crosby does have three years left on his current deal. So do a little quick math, and that's three plus three, six more years that Crosby intends to play. So it's kind of cool that Hextall's kind of following that, and he's signing all these guys to six-year deals and I mentioned this in the Chris Letang and Brian Rust extension videos that I made and I love that this is the idea you go longer term to try and bring the AAV down and that's what happened with Rust it's what happened with Letang and that's what's happening here with Ricard Raquel if this was a three or four year deal the AAV would probably be in the six million range so the fact that they're able to overpay in the term to just bring down that AAV I absolutely love this is one of the weirdest feelings I've had with a contract extension you know I'm so conflicted because you know, I love the contract. I love the price. I love the player. But signing this guy, Ricardo Raquel, now kind of hints at Evgeny Malkin gone, right? Probably a good chance he's going to sign somewhere else on July 13. Although the Penguins do have the cap to re-sign Evgeny Malkin, it's looking a lot unlikely. You know, it's official. He's going to test free agency. That doesn't mean he's officially gone. He could go see what other teams are offering. Maybe he doesn't like what he sees, comes back, takes the deal that Ron Hexel originally offered. And if Malkin leaves, it sucks so much because Ricard Raquel was brought in to play with Malkin to, you know, boost that top six, of course. And, you know, now signing the six-year deal, it's like we finally have a great winger for Malkin to end his career with. And with all these recent signings that Hextall's making, it's clear that, you know, they're not rebuilding, they're not retooling. They're going to run this back and try and go for at least one more run, hopefully. And, you know, having a guy like Malkin on your team and having re-signed all these guys gives your team such a beautiful chance for next year. But if you're doing all these great signings, like this Raquel extension, the Latang extension, all these, you know, Rust... It feels like it just doesn't matter if you're not bringing back Malkin. Now, listen, I have a lot of things I want to say about this Malkin thing. So I'm going to save the rest for a potential future video because, you know, it's going to be a longer one, that one, if he does leave. So let's just get on to the good news here. And that is Ricard Raquel re-signing. Now, like I mentioned before, I absolutely love this contract extension. I love Ricard Raquel. And I was almost certain that he was just a rental. We were most likely going to lose him. So the fact that we're able to get him on a long-term deal at, in my opinion, a very good price for, you know, a top six winger who I think will have his best years ahead with the Penguins. That's a might be a hot take. I don't know. But in my opinion, I think we're going to see the best of Ricard Raquel to come. His last few years in Anaheim, he was kind of trending downwards, you know, a few injuries in the way the Ducks weren't that great of a team you know but ever since that trade with the Penguins he looked like a brand new player 13 points in 19 games and most importantly he fits perfectly with Sidney Crosby the few shifts he actually got with him was magic every single time and with or without Crosby every single shift that Raquel played with the Penguins I felt like he was doing something like I noticed him he was always making plays happen he wasn't scoring obviously you're not going to score on every shift but he was on the ice I felt like the Penguins were most likely in the offensive zone more times than not. He's a pretty good skater. He's got some really good hands along with a very nice, sneaky, good release. Always hard on the forecheck. Like he's a perfect winger for a guy like Crosby or just in general to keep in your top six. And now looking back at the trade, it's an absolute steal for the Penguins. Even with Raquel just being a rental and playing just 19 games, it was a worth it trade. Now the fact that you're getting him for another six years locked up, what a trade. You know, just a couple fourth liners, a goalie prospect that you're most likely not going to use, and a second round pick. And you're getting a guy who's right now in his prime. And like I mentioned, I do think his best years are to come. Like, I'm very confident that next season could be Ricard Raquel's best season of his career. Like, I think he could get 30 plus goals. I think he can get somewhere in the 70 point range. And it's funny because I feel like us Penguins fans have overrated a lot of our wingers in just the history of the Crosby Malkin era. You know, I remember us, or me at least, saying Galchenyuk was going to do that. And I remember saying, Daniel Sprong was going to blossom into becoming this great player. Most recently, Kasper E. Kapanen, you know, he was supposed to go off last year and, you know, have a breakout season, 30 goals, 70 points, but, you know, nothing. But the thing is, with saying this about Ricard Raquel, he's done it before. You know, guys like Kapanen or Adele Chanyuk, those were younger players we were hoping were going to take that next step playing with one of these elite centers. But Ricard Raquel has put up elite numbers before, his career high being 34 goals and 69 points. Nice. Like he's done that before. And now give him an actual center and not just any center, one of the best centers of all time. 
I would not be shocked if he does that again next year. But I wouldn't even mind him playing on that second line. You know, even if he takes a bit of a dip production wise and maybe just gets 20, 25 goals, you know, 50, 60 points, that's still very, very good for the price they're paying. And now one final thing, what I really like about the Penguins contract situation, especially up front, take the top wingers of the team. Jake Gensel, $6 million. Brian Russ just recently signed a 5.1 and you know, we know what he can do. Ricard Raquel, $5 million. Like these are all team friendly contracts. Ricard Raquel staying in Pittsburgh for six more years. I love it. But your top priority here is that second line center because it doesn't matter how good these contracts are. It won't matter if you're not bringing back a Malkin replacement or Malkin himself to play next year. Because the whole point of the Ricard Raquel trade in the first place was to boost up the top six. All we had was one line scoring, which was the Crosby line. So let's bring Malkin a winger. So now if all of a sudden you got the winger, but no Malkin, and you know, centers are way more important than a winger is. No Malkin, and if you don't replace him with a decent second line center, that second line is gonna be worse than Malkin and no wingers. Because with no center, that line is just gonna plummet to the ground. No one's gonna be driving it. It's extremely rare that wingers drive their own lines. You need a solid center to drive it. That's why they're so important. And if you're going to go into next year with Jeff Carter as your second line center, then forget about all this because they might not even make the playoffs. So in conclusion, I love the re-signing. I like what Ron Hexall's been doing, you know, with these contracts. All of them so far I've liked. So, you know, all that's left for me is you got to find a solid second line center. And in a perfect world, to me, it's bringing back Evgeny Malkin. It's unlikely right now, but never say never with these type of things, especially with how much Malkin wants to come back, you know, maybe changes his mind, you know, or doesn't like what he sees in free agency. We got a final hour type of, you know, contract extension for Gino. That would be beautiful. But if not, Hextall, you got to be ready to replace him. And as for the video, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching and make sure to come back for the next one.